Astrophotography is difficult, especially for those of you that are just getting into it. There's a huge myriad of new types of pieces of gear that you've probably never heard of, and the selection is sometimes kind of daunting. Now, one thing, what type or size of sensor should you get if you're just starting out in astrophotography? Now, the answer is actually one that kind of makes sense, and it will probably surprise a lot of people. I'm gonna tell you right up front, small to medium sized sensors. Those are the kinds of sensors that the beginning astrophotographer should target. Now, look at this Newtonian behind me. That's my biggest scope. It has a 200 millimeter plate that soaks up massive amounts of light. It is also the hardest piece of equipment that I have to use. This is my smallest piece of gear. I'm kneeling next to it right now. And yes, this scope is the easiest and the most fun to use, okay? And when you're starting astrophotography, trust me, you wanna keep two things foremost in your hobby. Number one, it needs to be fun, and number two, it needs to be easy. Or maybe, actually, probably number one should be easy, and number two should be fun. So, the number one type of sensor that I would recommend are, in fact, the one-inch size sensors. These are very easy to use. They're affordable, of course. And here's a couple other things. No matter what kind of scope you pair them with, they're gonna work. There really isn't a scope out there that you can buy that isn't going to work with a one inch sensor. When you start getting into larger sensors, and this is kind of one of the best that I have with larger sensors, at least how salesmen try to sell larger sensors, is that they don't necessarily give you better results if your optical system doesn't fit that camera, okay? And in the beginning, you don't want to even have to worry about this stuff. Buying a one inch sensor means that you can just start using it. Okay, you don't have to worry about things like back focus, image circle, your scope, etc., and so forth. There's a whole myriad of different things that start to become incredibly critical when sensors get larger. I know with larger sensors, especially APS-C size sensors, things like the tilt, any tilt in the camera or the system will wreak havoc with your stars on different sides of the image and so forth. Things like vignetting, things like comas, all sorts of different types of aberrations that you probably never even heard of before are going to start becoming a problem with larger sensors. And they're things that have to be compensated for and require very specialized and tuned gear for that particular type of sensor. However, if you're using a one inch sensor, well, it's pretty much just throw it on the telescope and go because they're very, very forgiving. In fact, I've seen guys with one inch sensors have their back focused off by 10 millimeters and they were getting great images. Now, let me give you some model recommendations. In the past, there has been the, one, the IMX 183 sensor, which can be found in a myriad of different cameras from many different brands, by the way. QHY makes one, ZWO makes one. A bunch of the manufacturers will make that sensor. It's a one inch sensor, it's 20 megapixels. It really is a great image sensor, but it's actually not the one I would most recommend. Now, there is a sensor though that's one inch, and it is the perfect sensor for the person who's starting out. I wish that this camera had actually existed when I got into this hobby. It's the IMX 533. And yes, QHY makes a version of it, so does ZWO. It's found in a myriad of different brands out there, so you don't need to particu particularly stick to one ecosystem. What's great about the IMX 533? Well, first off, it's a nine megapixel sensor. In my opinion, this is perfect for the starter because it's enough resolution that you can get you know, good high quality images, but at the same time, the files are not gigantic. When you start getting into the higher megapixel count sensors, well, guess what? Those larger files are harder to process and you as a starting photographer don't need that headache. Another thing that's great about that sensor is the fact that it's square, which means that you don't have to worry about rotating the camera, <laughs> okay? It's one less thing to complicate your image session and, and that is what you need and want as a beginning astrophotographer. Now, so IMX 533, there's a mono version and there's a color version. I would actually recommend the mono version just as highly as the color version because let me tell you what, there's nothing easier than processing a mono image. Color images are harder. 
<laughs> okay. And going from mono to like narrow band and then starting to combine the different layers and so forth. It's actually very, very easy. As a matter of fact, my own processing is done through Aztec. I know, Aztec commercial here. It, it's actually just as easy for me to process one shot color images as it is for me to process my narrow band stuff because of the innovations that have been put into software today. Okay, commercial for Aztec over. Back to the cameras. Now, if you're feeling a little bit more uh, ambitious, okay, maybe you got a little bigger budget, and maybe you've got like lots of experience, you've been taking the pictures with your DSLR, okay, and you, and you want to get a more medium range sensor. In this case, I would recommend a four-thirds sensor. Now, there's a bunch out there. There's the IMX294, which is a one-shot color sensor, and it is very popular. It's been around for a long time. It was actually ZW's best-selling camera for quite a while. There's also this guy here, and this is found in a couple of different brands. This is the IMX269. Altair sells it. I think ATEC sells it as well. This sensor is awesome. I think this is the best four-third sensor out there for a beginning astrophotographer, simply because it has no amp glow. And by the way, that's another thing I love about the IMX533 that I was just talking about. There's no amp glow in it, which means that calibration is really easy, okay? The 183 sensor, which is also one inch sensor, has amp glow in it. The 294 also has amp glow in it, and so does the mono version, okay? And this right here, this is the 1600, and this, this would actually be my my second recommendation for you if you wanted a mono sensor. These things are still, you can still buy these brand new, but you can also buy them used really cheap. You can get one for 700 bucks now, okay? As of me making this video right now. And the great thing about this sensor is, although it has some amp glow, that amp glow is actually very naturalish looking. It, 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 almost, it almost looks like it'd be part of the picture. So if you make a mistake in your processing, it's not gonna like completely ruin your image. And that's kind of one of the things that's been great about the ZWS 1600 and also it's various different flavors that it has shown up in other brands. I know Orion sells the 1600 type sensor. So does QHY still. It's a sensor that's been out of production for almost 10 years, but there's still enough of them around to keep making cameras. So yeah, those are some of my recommendations. IMX 533 is absolutely my first recommendation. 1600 or the 269 would be my second recommendations. Now in this hobby, many of us old farts who have been in this hobby for a long time, you know, we've seen people start and stop. And typically the ones who start and stop the fastest, they're this, they're this type, okay? You know, we'll call them Adam, okay? Just because it's letter A, it starts in the beginning of the alphabet. You know, Adam, they, they have deep pockets, he buys fifty to sixty thousand dollars worth of gear in a few months' time. Tries to get it all together. Goes to a couple dark sky sites. You know, goes to a couple conferences. Tries to learn. You know, gets some coaching and so forth. And you know, maybe they find some things are missing in their imaging train, and so they buy more gear. You know, and about seventy to eighty thousand dollars into it. And yes, these are real people that I have met. I have seen this scenario played out several times. Okay. Yeah, sixty or seventy thousand dollars into it. Well, they just get frustrated and they sell all their gear. Okay. And I know I have actually purchased a lot of gear from individuals like this. I don't want you to be that person. You know, just start small, enjoy the journey. Smaller gear is much easier to use. So it's it's the old adage, you know, in college they, they told us the kiss analogy, okay? Keep it simple, stupid. At the end of the day, it's about enjoying this hobby, uh, having a great adventure, because really astrophotography, it is a fantastic adventure. I know my life would be very different without it.